Hello everyone, Brian here. Following up on the Clever Papers Norwegian Church cardboard model uh, that I showed you in a previous video. In that video, I speculated it would take about an hour and a half to two hours to complete this, and I called it right. Um, I took almost exactly two hours to put this together. Now, it's not complete as we see it here. I took a couple of parts off so that I could talk a little bit about uh, some of the fit and fittings here. Um, but this is an impressive little model. Um, we t I talked before about how the base had some scoring on the stones down here, which was nice, and it turns out the whole model uh, has uh, all these roof tiles have scoring, which gives a nice texture and reflection. Um, there's lots of detail here, including a lot of detail you're never going to see. Um, all of the, there's actually a cloister walk around the core of the church, and all of these windows um, are letting you see into the cloister. Uh, I can't show it to you on the camera, but inside there are a couple of doors that are partially open. There's lots of detailing inside that, that you're never going to see unless you pull off the roof here. Um, and then even back here in the sacristy, there's a little altar. And behind the altar is uh, a, a painting. And the painting is, is beautifully detailed for such a tiny little thing. But there's not even a way to see that. So once that's in... There's a, a little open door you can almost see there, but there's there's no light in there. There's no way to see that. Um, so kudos to them for adding so much nice detail on this, even when you're not going to see it. And the fun thing about that is as you're building it, um, you you get a real picture of, of how the church is structured and constructed, how it all actually goes together, um, which is kind of cool. So you can see on the underside here, so the base went together nicely, and, and it's really a nice touch to give us that base with a little fake plaque here saying what it is. But you can see on the underside how the whole thing goes together, and it is all, uh, it's all little tabs that push through and, and get anchored just by the way the cutouts are. Um, and so it pushes together. The downside is once you push them together, they are reluctant to come back apart. So if you don't do it right, you can get them back out. But, um, you know, the more you put these together and pull them apart again, the more uh, risk you're taking with the model. Because the, you know, the cardboard is, is solid. Uh, let's see, can I... I don't know if I dare pull a piece back out. The cardboard is solid, but when you push pieces together, uh, for example, I've got a piece over here that's going to go right in this slot. There's a slot right there, and that's going to push down into that slot. Um, I can do that once, and it'll be nice and tight. If I pull it back out again and put it back in again, it's going to get less tight as we go, and things are not going to hold together as well. Uh, the other thing you've got to watch out for is if you're trying to put something together and it, it's taking too much force, you really got to stop and take a look at what you're doing again. Because all you got to do is is bend or, or uh, you're just going to mess up these tabs once and then you're having to resort to glue or something else to, to deal with them. And, and if these bend and flex too much, then even glue is not going to make them as solid as they would be otherwise. Um, so you've got to be careful. This, this roof assembly right here is all one piece connected by this front. And when I went to put that in, I positioned it all in place and then made sure I had anchorage here behind with my fingers as I pushed that together because I don't want to be pushing the whole structure back and forth. Um, they're really good at providing sort of internal bracing the way this all goes together, but uh, you should stress the model as little as humanly possible while you put this all together. If I couldn't reach, so this roof section here is all one piece, and it's on an angle, and it goes against another piece of roof section, which isn't flat against this structure. And so what I would do a lot is I would take a pair of angled tweezers, and I would put them up behind there to give myself some bracing. Sometimes I'd take an X-Acto knife and I'd slide it between between the wall and the roof here to provide anchoring as I pushed this in. Um, I might provide 
force on counter force on either side to put those things together. Uh, anything I could do to sort of uh, provide a counter pressure so I'm not pushing too hard on anything. The other thing I'd want to note for these, I don't know if this will show up on the camera, but this piece of roof, I said, you know, was all one piece connected by this very narrow piece here in front. And it is scored there and there to bend, but it, it's not like you can just take the pieces and bend them on each side. If you try and do that, there's so little structure right here that all it's going to do is twist that piece of roof over. And so what I would do in those cases is I would lay the piece down and I would set this, uh, this is a little precision six inch woodcraft uh, metal ruler uh, that I got for woodworking and I use for everything. Um, it's amazing how handy this is. But I would lay the piece upside down and I would lay the ruler right across where the crease is and I would, I would hold this front down while I bend the top up. And I did that on a lot of these pieces to make sure I wasn't putting undue stress, even as I was doing the bending on these things. Um, so you got to be really careful for, for little sections like that. And you've got to think about how are you going to do the bend without creating a problem. Um, I had a problem the first time I did it. I believe it was on this piece. And I got a little stress in there and had to kind of work with it to get it to look good. Um, but then I started using this. Yeah, it was on that piece and on this piece too here. And and even here, you might be able to see it's not flat. It's it's kind of angled sideways and the cardboard is stressed right there, creating a little gap, um, which is unfortunate. But you live and you learn. So what was the difficult, most difficult piece of this? Well, the most difficult thing was to take a flat piece of cardboard like this and get it into a round shape. And here is, again, I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but these are scored in angles. Uh, there's all kinds of different angles on here that they did the scoring so that you could just sort of gently bend this and get a circular kind of look out of it. Um, it took a lot of fiddling and playing with and what helps on these is to get a dowel and put the dowel there and kind of work it around a round dowel so that uh, you've already got something that's roughly the shape you want it to be in. That was one example. This is another example of something that ultimately is supposed to be completely round and come together. Um, I don't know how successful that is. It's tough to make flat cardboard round, especially when it's, it's scored. Um, so this piece and these pieces were definitely the hardest part of that. So I'll put those back on to sort of give you an impression of, of how this thing goes together. So I've got this piece providing some structure in the back, and it slots right down on there like that. And then I worked the piece I just talked about. I got it into the shape I wanted. Then we'll put one side of that tab over in there, and that goes in fairly nicely. And then we'll just angle this one up and get it in and sort of push the whole thing down. Now, again, if that had gone in hard at all, I would have tried to come up under here and provided support for that. But um, that was actually in before and I had to remove it to do something. And so uh, it doesn't go in as tightly now as it did before. So then this, this piece goes around together like this and then it slots hopefully slots right in the top here and there is uh, on the side where it goes together there is a little slot that is supposed to go over the piece I just put inside and is not quite doing that ah all right both sides have a slot that need to go in. So if I can get this side in, there we go. Yeah, there, now I can get that side in. And that's designed to hold it up to a certain height. So there we go. It's sort of round, kind of round. 
I'm just looking inside to see if I've gone all the way down as far as I can go. I have not. So now I've got a problem of really got nothing underneath to do. Yeah, see, I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure I'm wanting to put as much pressure on that uh, to get it down in there. So what I may do is I may leave it at this height, even though it's a little higher than it should be, and see if I can't get the roof on uh, where it is. Now, this little roof piece, again, it was a flat piece that I had to work with. It had to go all the way around. And then you may or may not be able to un see under there, it had two tabs, one on either side, which folded straight in and both of them had to go into the same um, flat piece of cardboard here. Um, so that can be fidgety work. It's these round things that are that are difficult to do. And then that slides down in there like, nope, I've got it backwards. The seam should actually go towards the church where you'll never really see it. So there we go. Not awful. Um, but again, this on this particular model, this is where the trick is. The other thing I wanted to note is, um, uh, so the, the roof beams, the roof rafters, I'm not sure what you would call them in something like this, but these triangular pieces here are solid. And again, it's kind of nice that there was little punch outs here so that you get a real sense of, uh, of how the beams are constructed. They could have easily left those solid because you'll never see them. And yet they provided that detail of, of um, allowing you to see what those look like. Um, very, very nice. We seem to have a visitor on the workbench. Let's go, Taco. No pussycats on the workbench. That happens occasionally. I may have to get her out of here. Nope, she's going on her own. So, this piece, um, this is probably a combination of what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is ten pieces, this roof assembly. And then there is another piece that goes on top of it here, which also is about 10 pieces or so. So those things, once they're done, slot together just like that. And then this sets down right on top here. Um, another thing about this particular model is nothing tells you to bend these, these curved pieces here. They are part of this structure. And originally they were both straight up and there's nothing there that says bend them. And so when I tried to put the roof on, the roof wasn't going down and, and I wasn't sure why. And then I pulled this off and looked and saw this was scored. It's supposed to be bent inward slightly, which makes sense. And once I took care of that, hopefully it won't make a liar out of me. This slides now nicely on. There are little slots at the top that it fits into. And there we go. Um, what might I do a little different next time around? I've got a piece here that the tab just isn't tight, and so it's not flat against that roof, and it angles down just slightly. And I can't do a whole lot about that um, without possibly reverting to glue. So... To keep things from separating over time, if I were to do, well, when I do one of these models again, I'm sure I will do one of these models again, I may actually use a little bit of glue, um, uh, maybe just a little bit of white glue on the slots for the tab. So as you push it in, there's a little glue there uh, to set and catch and make sure things stay uh, put over time. So not strictly necessary, but something that I might do differently next time. So there it is. Um, the boxes say that these models are good for eight and up. Um, I don't know. Um, 
they do require, it would be very easy for a younger child, uh, even a young teenager, if they're not used to working carefully with these kind of things, um, it would be very easy for them to bend tabs, uh, to wreck the whole structure, trying to force something in. Um, it would be tough to bend some of these items I talked about that are very thin. So I, I think somebody eight and older certainly could do this, uh, but if you're considering getting one of these for, for one of your children, if you've got a, a, a very type A, uh, very careful kind of child, these may work great. Um, if you've got more of a fast and loose sort of catch as catch can kind of child, um, you may find that this is more frustrating than anything for them. Certainly for adults, it's a great little, uh, great little two hour diversion um, and a very, in this case, especially a very interesting subject matter. I've never seen one of these churches before. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, the directions were reasonably easy to follow. I don't think I had any real questions about anything I did. It was fairly straightforward. And again, they've got those little uh, QV, I think they're called QVC codes, whatever those little squares are that you can uh, take a picture of with your cell phone. It'll lead you straight to a website to videos that show you how to put these things together. Um, the website, uh, look for it in the description. Uh, it is in Russian. If you translate that Russian, just using, say, Google functionality, um, uh, you know, there's no problem in doing that. Uh, lots of interesting models, um, and not only do they do historical subjects, but they also do uh, model railroad buildings, um, hundreds of them. Um, so a really interesting company, and, and all the work is first rate. Um, for what it is, it's really pretty impressive. So anyway, that's the video. Um, like, subscribe, comment. Um, we'll see more of these paper models in the future, and um, they're just a nice way if you're working on some of the more detailed models, um, like I've been doing with Domus kits and Ada Sars, uh, that take a long time. It's nice occasionally to get in and build something like this or build one of the Lego architectural series, uh, something that you can do a little quicker and easier. So thank you for joining me, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.